Hello children, welcome again to week three and as before, we'll continue from where we left off. Add. Good news, huh? Bob says when Max out of your shop. Looks like you might be getting some more supplies. I don't want to paint for Mark, I say. I'm painting for Ruby. You can do both, Bob says. You're an artist after all. While I watch the movie, I try to come up with a new hiding place for my paintings. Maybe I think I could fold them once they dry and stuff them into knot tag. It's a long movie. At the end, the sheriff marries the woman who owns the saloon, which is a watering hole for humans, but not horses. I've been, it's been a long time since I've seen a western that was also a romance. I like that movie, I say to Bob. Too many horses, not enough dogs, he comments. An ad comes on. I don't understand ads. They're not like westerns where you know who the bad guy is supposed to be. And they're hardly ever romantic unless a man and woman are brushing their teeth before they face lake. I watch an ad for underarm deodorant. How do you know who's who if they don't smell, I asked Bob. Humans reek, Bob replies. They just don't notice because they have incompetent noses. Another ad comes on. I see children and their parents buying tickets, just like the tickets Max sells. They laugh, enjoying the ice cream cones as they walk down a path. They pause to watch two sleepy-eyed cats, huge and striped, dozing in long grass. Tigers. I know because I saw them on a nature show once. Words flash on the screen, accompanied by a drawing of a red giraffe. The red giraffe vanishes, and I see a human family staring at another kind of family. Elephants. Old and young. They're surrounded by rocks and trees and grass and room to wander. It's a wild cage. A zoo. I see where it begins and where it ends. The wall that says, you are this, we are that, and that is how it will always be. It's not a perfect place. Even just a few fleeting seconds on my TV screen, I can see that. A perfect place would not need walls. But it's the place I need. I gaze at the elephants, and then I look over at Ruby, small and alone. Before the ad ends, I try to remember every last detail. Rocks, trees, tails, trunk. It's the picture I need to paint. Imagining. It's different now when I paint. I'm not painting what I see in front of me, a banana, an apple. I'm painting what I see in my head, things that don't exist, at least not yet. Knot tag. I pull out knot tags to stuffing. Carefully, I fill it with my paintings, hiding them so Mark won't sell them. She's large, bigger than Bob, but I still have to crumple a few of them. Bob tries to settle on her for a nap. You've killed her, he complains. I had to, I say. I miss your stomach, Bob, and it's so spacious. When Julia arrives, she notices that I've used up my paints and paper. Wow, Julia shakes her head. You are one serious artist, Ivan. One more thing. My finger painting has sold for $40 with frame. Mac is happy. He brings me a huge pile of paper and big buckets of paint. Get to work, he says. I paint for Mac during the day and for Ruby at night. I nap when I can. But my nighttime picture isn't quite right. It's big, that's for sure. When I place all the pieces on the floor of my cage side by side, the cement is almost, is almost completely covered. But something is still missing. Bob says I'm crazy. There's Ruby, he says, pointing with his nose. There's the zoo. There are other elephants. What's wrong with that? It needs one more thing, I say. Bob groans. You're being a temperamental artist. What could be missing? I stare at the huge expanse of colours and shapes. I don't know how to explain to Bob that it isn't done yet. I'll just have to wait, I say at last. Something will come to me and then I'll know my painting is finally ready. The seven o'clock show. During the last show of the day, Ruby seems tired. When she stumbles, Mac reaches for the claw stick. I tense, waiting for her to strike back. Ruby doesn't even flinch. She just keeps plodding along, and after a while, Sneakers jumps onto her back. 12. I lie in my cage with Bob on my stomach. We are watching Julia do her homework. She doesn't seem to be enjoying it. I can tell because she is sighing more than usual. Again, for the hundredth time, or maybe the thousandth, I wonder what is missing from my painting. And for the hundredth time, or maybe the thousandth, I don't have an answer. Dad, Julie says as George passes by with a mop, can I ask you a question? May I, George corrects. Ask away. Julie glances down at a piece of paper. What's the difference between the word spelled P-R-I-N-C-I-P-A-L and the one spelled P-R-I-N-C-I-P-L-E? 
The first one is the head of a school, like Miss Garcia. The second one is a belief that helps you know what's right or wrong, he smiles. For example, it's against my principles to do my daughter's homework for her. Julia groans. If I'm going to be an artist when I grow up, why do I need to know how to spell? With a laugh, George heads off. Poor Julia, I think. Gorillas get by just fine without learning how to spell. All those endless letters, those sticks and circles and zigzags, filling up books and magazines, billboards and candy wrappers. Words. Humans love their words. I leap up. Bob goes flying straight into my pool. A word. You know how I feel about wet feet, Bob yells. He scrambles out of the water, shaking each foot in dismay. I look at my window at the billboard. I can still hear Mac's voice in my head. Come to the Exit 8 Big Top Mall and Video Arcade, home of the one and only Ivan, mighty silverback. I count to 12, and then I count again, just to be sure. H. I lay out 16 pieces of poster board. Four down, four across. A perfect square. What are you up to, Bob demands. I'm guessing it doesn't involve sleep. It has to do with the billboard. That sign's a monstrosity, particularly since I'm not featured. I grab my bucket of red paint. You're not on the billboard because you're not in the show, I point out. Technically, I don't even live here, Bob says with a sniff. I am homeless by choice. I know, I'm just saying. I study the billboard, then I make two fat lines like broom handles. Another fat line connects them. I stand back. What do you think? What is it? No, wait, let me guess. A ladder. Not a ladder, I say. A letter. At least I think that's what they're called. I have to make three more. Bob cuddles up next to next tab. Why? He asks, yawning. Because then I'll have a word. A very important word. I dip my fingers into the paint. What word, Bob asks? Home. Bob closes his eyes. That's not so important, he says quietly. Nervous. All day long, I knuckle walk circles around my cage. I'm so nervous, I can't nap. I can't even eat. Well, not very much anyway. I'm ready to show Julia what I've made. It has to be Julia. She's an artist. Surely she'll look, truly look at my painting. She won't notice the smudges and tears. She won't care if the pieces don't quite fit together. She'll see past all of that. Surely Julia will see what I've imagined. I watch Ruby trudge suddenly through the four o'clock show and I wonder, what will happen if I fail? What if I can't make Julia understand? But of course I know the answer, nothing, nothing will happen. Ruby will remain the main attraction at the exit eight, big top mall and video arcade, conveniently located off I-95, with shows at two, four and seven, 365 days a year, year after year after year after year. Showing Julia. It's time to show my work. The mall is silent except for Thelma the McCall who's practicing a new face. Uh oh. Julius is finishing her homework. George is sweeping outside. Mac has gone home for the night. I grab knot tag and carefully pull out the folded papers. So many paintings, page after page, piece after piece of my giant puzzle. I pound on my gla glass and Julia glances over. Fingers trembling, I hold up one of my paintings. It's brown and green, a corner piece. Julia smiles. I display another picture, and then another, and another, and another, each one a tiny part of the whole. Julia looks confused. But what is it, she asks. She shrugs. It doesn't matter. It's just as pretty as it is. Uh-oh, says Thelma. No, I think. No, it does matter. More paintings. Julia calls out to Ivan. He's done for the night. Grab your backpack, he says, and hurry, it's late. Gotta go, Ivan, Julia says. Julia doesn't understand. I have to find the right pieces. I dig through the pile. They're here somewhere. I know they are. I find another, another one, another. I try to hold four of them up against the glass. Bob, I say, help me, hurry. Bob grabs paintings with his teeth and drags them to me. One by one, I shove pictures through the window crack, crumple it and tear. There are too many pieces. My puzzle is too big. Careful, Ivan, Julia says. Those might be worth millions one someday. You never know. She arranges the paintings into a neat stack. I suppose Mac's going to want to sell these in the gift shop. She still doesn't understand. I shove out more out of the hoard and more and more, all of them one after another. 
So Ivan's been painting, has he? George says as he puts on his coat. A lot, Julia says with a laugh. A whole lot. You're not taking all those home with you, are you? George asks. I mean, no offence to Ivan, but they're just blobs. Julia sums through the towering stack of paintings. They might not be blobs to Ivan. Let's leave those by the office, George suggests. Mark will want to try selling them, although why would anyone pay 40 bucks for a finger painting a two-year-old could do? I don't know. I like Ivan's work, Julia says. He puts his feelings into them. He puts his hair into them, George says. Julia waves goodbye. Night, Ivan. Night, Bob. Press my nose against the glass and watch her work away. All my work, all my planning wasted. I look at Ruby sleeping soundly and suddenly I know she'll never leave the big top mall. She'll be here forever, just like Stella. I can't let Ruby be another one and only. Often, when visitors... Chest beating. Often, when visitors come to see me, they beat their hands against a puny chest, pretending to be me. They pound away soundless as the wet wings of a new butterfly. The chest beating of a mad gorilla is not something you ever want to hear, not even if you're wearing earplugs, not even if you're three miles away wearing earplugs. A real chest beating sends the whole jungle running, as if the sky has broken open, as if men with guns are near. Angry. Thump. The sound. My sound echoes through the mall. George and Julia spin around. Julia drops her backpack. George drops his keys. The pile of pictures goes flying. Thump, thump, thump. I bounce off the walls. I screech and bellow. I beat and beat and beat my chest. Bob hides and did not tag. His paws over his ears. I'm angry. At last, I have someone to protect. Puzzle pieces. After a long while, I grow quiet. I sit. It's hard work being angry. Julia looks at me with wide, disbelieving eyes. I'm panting. I'm a little out of shape. What the heck was that? George demands. Something's really wrong, Julia says. I've never seen Ivan act this way. He seems to be calming down, thank goodness, George says. Julia shakes her head. He's still upset, Dad. Look at his eyes. My pictures are scattered all over the floor like huge autumn leaves. What a mess, George says, saying, I wish I hadn't bothered sweeping tonight. Do you think Ivan's okay? Julia asks. Probably just a temper tantrum, George says. He reaches under a chair to retrieve a brown and red picture. Can't say I blame the guy stuck in that tiny cage all these years. Julia starts to answer, but then she freezes. She cocks her head. She stares at her feet where my pictures lie in disarray. Dad, she whispers, come see this. I'm sure he's another Rembrandt, George says. Let's pick these up and get going, Jules. I'm exhausted. Dad, she says again, seriously, look at this. George follows her gaze. I see blobs, many, many blobs, along with occasional swirl. Please, can we go home now? That's a H. That's an H, Dad. Julia kneels down, straightening one picture, then another. That's a H, and here... She grabs more pictures. Put this one here, and I don't know, maybe that one... You have an E. George rubs his eyes. I hold my breath. Julia is running now. She picks up one picture, sets down another. It's like a puzzle, Dad. This is something. It's a word, maybe words, and a picture of something, a giant picture. Jules, George says, this is crazy. But he's looking at the floor too, wandering from picture to picture and scratching his head. H, Julia says, E-O. Julia chews a lower hip, um, lip. H-E-O, and that one looks a lot like an I. H-E-O-I, George writes in the air with his finger. I-E-O-H. Not the letter, an actual I, and that's a foot, or maybe a tree, and a trunk. Dad, I think that's a trunk. Julia runs to my window. Ivan, she whispers, what did you make? I stare back, I cross my arms. This is taking much longer than I thought it would. Humans. Sometimes they make chimps look smart. Right, we'll end there as we're running out of time and it's the end of the chapter and we'll continue on next week.